This conference will now be recorded. So it is okay? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So again, I'm starting from the beginning. So in the optical, in the applied physics subject, in the fourth period, we are having two chapters. One is lasers and the second one is optical fibers. So in the in this slot, so today I would like to finish lasers topic. I'm providing the brief overview and the outlines how to understand this topic. Uh, because you have to get a unit before April 14th. So this slot, I will try to finish lasers. And in the next slot, so I will try to finish optical fibers. So first of all, so laser, what is meant by this laser? So what is the acronym? What is the abbreviation of this laser? I think most of you know, laser means light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation. So the entire process behind the operation of this laser light, basically it is a light, you know, it is a very powerful light. So the entire operation of this powerful light will be depends upon this acronym, light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation. So first you observe the first word light and the last one is radiation. So simply it is indicating a light radiation. It is a kind of light, you know, already. So lever light radiation is a kind of electromagnetic radiation. Our normal light is also a kind of electromagnetic radiation. So just like that, this laser light is also a kind of electromagnetic radiation. And if you observe the stimulated emission, this stimulated emission, this is the process which is responsible for the production of this laser light. And if you observe the word amplification, what is meant by this amplification? You know, the general meaning of the word amplification, amplifying the signal, amplifier. So that means with the minimum input, we have to put a maximum output. That is the meaning of the word amplification. Therefore, the entire physics behind the operation of say, laser light will depend upon this acronym of laser, which is nothing but light amplification by Simulated emission of radiation, right? So, in which way this laser light is different from this normal light? So, you know, we are having a normal light, our normal uh, tube light, normal light. These are also considered as a kind of uh, electromagnetic radiation. Already I told you, laser is also a kind of electromagnetic radiation. What is the difference between this normal light and laser light? So, if we want to know this, this laser light is having four special characteristics. So those are nothing but first one is directionality. So laser emits its radiation in only one direction. If you switch on the laser device, I think all of you know the laser devices. So pocket laser devices, handheld laser devices. If you switch on the light, what happens? Light is coming out from the device in only one direction. And the second thing is it is having very high intensity. So how much intensity it is having if you focus this powerful laser light into somebody's eyes simply will become blind that much power possessed by this laser light and third one is monochromacity what is meant by this monochromacity mono mono means single chromatic color it is exhibiting only one color that color is due to its wavelength so the color depends upon wavelength or you may call it as frequency wavelength or frequency both are reciprocal to each other Therefore, the color of any light radiation depends upon its wavelength. If you observe the normal light, so usually it is white in color. That means it is having seven colors, FIBGR. But if you observe the laser light, it is having only one color. Is it right or not? So either red color laser or blue color laser, yellow color laser, orange color laser, like that at a time. So the laser is exhibiting only one color. So the traditional color of laser, you know, that is red color. So monochromacity, out of all the electromagnetic radiations that are available so far, only laser is capable of exhibiting monochromacity. If you want to convert white light into monochromatic light, you are going to use filters. In the lab, when you are performing the photoelectric effect experiment, we are using filters, blue color filter, orange color filter, red color filter, like that. So with that, we can able to make the actual white light into the form of monochromatic light. So that means we are converting white light into monochromatic light, but that kind of arrangement is not required in case of lasers. Why? Because laser is truly monochromatic, right from the generation itself, 
it is capable of exhibiting only one color that's why the degree of monochromacity of laser light is several million times better than the normal light and the fourth characteristic is nothing but coherence what is meant by this coherence you know light is exhibiting dual nature one is particle nature and second one is wave nature when light is exhibiting wave nature it is traveled in the form of a sine curve so you will notice alternate crust and thrusts therefore if you take two crusts or two thrusts so they are maintaining constant phase difference then such a light wave is said to be in coherence so that type of coherence is truly possible only in case of laser light therefore finally regarding these characteristics out of all the electromagnetic radiations available so far only laser light is a special light which is capable of exhibiting these four special characteristics known as directionality high intensity monochromacity and coherence and the next immediate question how to rise is why only laser light is capable of exhibiting these four characteristics these four special features are not possible in any other electromagnetic radiation why the ultimate answer is you know every light is consisting of photons you know the energy h nu e is equals to h nu every light is made up of with photons such a photons are divided into two categories one is coherent photons and other category is incoherent photons so what is the difference between these two types of photons first of all let me tell you the coherent photon characteristics so all the photons are having same energy that is e equals to h nu and all those are traveled in one direction as a result they can able to maintain constant phase difference therefore if you take a combination or a group of photons such a photons are capable of exhibiting these three characteristics one is they are having same energy and the second one is they are traveled in only one direction and third one they can able to maintain constant phase difference such a group of photons are called as coherent photons and whereas in case of other category incoherent photons so they are having same energy but they are traveled in all possible directions they are traveled in random directions as a result of this random directionality they can't able to maintain constant phase difference such a photons are called as incoherent photons our laser light consists of coherent photons that's why it is traveled in only one direction all the photons are traveled in only one direction that's why the first characteristic unidirectionality and all those are traveled in only one direction as a result their entire energy is concentrated within the small region that's why they are having high intensity because of this narrow width exhibited by the laser light by the presence of these coherent photons they can able to possess only one wavelength that's why monochromacity is applicable and the last one coherence so because of this small bandwidth it is very easy for us to maintain constant phase difference between any two consecutive crusts or thrusts that's why coherence is also possible only in case of laser light and what about this other category what about the other category incoherent photons they are present in all other electromagnetic radiations except laser light for example in our room we are having a tube light or led light so all these light radiations are consisting of incoherent photons that's why observe in the room if we switch on the light what happens light is dispersed into all possible directions that is due to the different directions exhibited by the incoherent photons photons are traveled randomly in all possible directions even though we are having same energy but because of those random directions this normal light will be spreading uniformly in all possible directions but in case of laser light it is there what happens it is traveled in only one direction therefore the presence of coherent photons once again the presence of coherent photons are completely responsible to exhibit the four special characteristics known as unidirectionality high intensity monochromacity 
and the last one is coherence because of these presence of coherent photons we are having these four special characteristics for the laser light right so first of all you know what is the abbreviation of laser light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation what is the specialty of laser light it is exhibiting those four special characteristics named as directionality high intensity monochromacy and the last one is coherence why laser light is exhibiting these four special characteristics you know already already explained by the presence of coherent photons what are coherent photons if you consider a group of photons all the photons are traveled in only one direction and all the photons are having same energy as a result they can able to maintain constant phase difference that's why laser is exhibiting these four special characteristics now based on these few points if you want to define exactly what is meant by laser now i will tell you what is the exact definition of laser laser is a kind of electromagnetic radiation with absolute purity and high intensity which were never found before in any other electromagnetic radiation once again i am repeating the exact way of defining laser light laser is a kind of electromagnetic radiation with absolute purity it is a pure form of light that's why with absolute purity and high intensity which were never found before in any other electromagnetic radiation so this is the exact way of defining laser light right then coming to the next one how do you produce laser light so to produce laser light so how to consider the three elementary processes so first one is absorption which is required and second one is emission process again this emission is divided into two categories one is spontaneous emission and second one is stimulated emission so consider two energy levels you know the system of energy levels one is ground state and second one is higher energy level usually majority of the electrons are present at ground state and if you excite them they will be reached to the higher energy level therefore so i am going to define the first process known as absorption once the electrons are present majority number in the ground state by applying certain amount of external agency we will lift the electrons from ground state to the higher energy levels such a process is known as absorption process you can able to see the definition of this absorption on the screen when an atom or electron absorbs an amount of energy h u in the form of photon from the external agency and it is excited to the higher energy level from the ground state then this process is known as absorption that means within planes of external agency an electron is raised from ground state to higher energy level by absorbing an energy which is equivalent to one photon amount of energy such a process is known as absorption therefore once the absorption process is over very clearly you can able to know now majority of the electrons are present at higher energy level so once the electrons are present at higher energy level they are not staying in the higher energy level on a permanent basis why because so gradually they will lose their energy so how much amount of energy they gained during the process of absorption slowly their energy will be decreasing once their energy will be decreasing they have to return to ground state such a process is known as emission process what is meant by emission so once the electrons are present at higher energy level they have to return back to the ground state by releasing an energy how much amount of energy so how much amount of energy they absorbed during the process of absorption such a amount of energy they have to emit as a result they will be reached to the ground state such a process is known as emission process to understand the process of emission i will tell you a general example for example if you went to your relative's house or stay in the relative's house so will stay in the relative's house one or two day and again you have to come back to your home that is known as emission process if you want to take a like example so therefore such a emission is having two components that means such a emission process is divided into two categories 
one is spontaneous emission and second one is stimulated emission what is the difference between this spontaneous emission and stimulated emission spontaneous emission on its own spontaneously without applying any external agency the electrons which are present in the higher energy level those are returned back to the ground state by releasing an energy which is equivalent to one photon amount of energy such a process is known as spontaneous emission that means we are not going to apply any external agency on its own spontaneously instantaneously the electrons which are present in the higher energy level they are returned back to the ground state by releasing certain amount of energy such a process is known as spontaneous emission process see the definition here when an atom is in the excited state emits a photon amount of energy h nu coming down to the ground state by itself without any external agency after a lifetime such an emission process is called as a spontaneous emission process then coming to the second type of process in the emission that is a stimulated emission stimulate induce someone has to initiate so that means with influence of external agency the electrons which are present in the higher energy level are returned back to the ground state by releasing listen carefully here by releasing two photons amount of energy such a process is called as a stimulated emission process why two photons amount of energy one photon amount of energy is required to start the process of emission forcefully we have to brought back the electrons from higher energy level to lower energy level so that means we need one to start the process of stimulated emission and during the process of stimulated emission we are getting one more photon therefore as a result we are getting two photons during the process of stimulated emission therefore with influence of external agency the electrons which are present in the higher energy level are returned back to the ground state by releasing two photons amount of energy before their lifetime such a process is called as stimulated emission see the definition here when an atom in the excited state when an atom or electron in the excited state emits two photons of same energy while coming down to the ground state with influence of an external agency before lifetime such a emission is called as stimulated emission observe here in the spontaneous emission electron star gives electron plus one photon that's a one h nu here two h nu and the photons which are released during the process of spontaneous emission those are incoherent photons but whereas during the stimulated emission the photons which you are getting those are perfectly coherent photons therefore you know already laser is a kind of light radiation which consists of coherent photons that's why here coherent photons we are getting only in stimulated emission process that's why stimulated emission is the process which is completely responsible to produce laser light that's why here if you observe the abbreviation of laser light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation so therefore laser light you are going to get only during the process of stimulated emission if you operate the spontaneous emission we will get the normal light normal tube light normal conventional light traditional light leds all those are operated during the process of spontaneous emission but if you operate the stimulated emission we are getting perfectly coherent photons those are those coherent photons are considered as laser light emission so these are the three processes we have to consider in fact two processes one is absorption and second one is emission and emission is divided into two categories spontaneous emission and stimulated emission stimulated emission and you have to remember one point very clearly if there is no absorption there is no emission whether it may be a spontaneous emission or stimulated emission therefore if you want to conduct either spontaneous emission process or stimulated emission process you have to operate absorption process first that is the mandatory requirement right so we have to know the differences between the two emission process one is spontaneous emission and second one is stimulated emission 
So first one, spontaneous emission, external agency is not required. Stimulated emission, external agency is required. Spontaneous emission, second difference in the spontaneous emission, only one photon is coming out. And second, in the stimulated emission, two photons are released. And again in the spontaneous emission, third difference, after lifetime, this process will take place. But stimulated emission, this process will take place before lifetime. And in case of spontaneous emission, the fourth difference is incoherent photons are coming out. Whereas in stimulated emission, coherent photons are coming out. Fifth difference in the spontaneous emission, this is completely uncontrolled process. But whereas in the stimulated emission, this is completely controlled process. If you want to produce laser light, then start the operation of stimulated emission. That's why stimulated emission is controlled process. Sixth difference, spontaneous emission. Under the spontaneous emission, sixth difference, this is not producing laser light, whereas stimulated emission, it produces laser light. So what we discussed so far, so abbreviation of laser. What is the specialty of laser? What is the definition of laser? What are the four special characteristics exhibited by the laser? Unidirectionality, high intensity, monochromacity, and coherence. Next one, the two basic process, one is absorption and second one is emission. Again, emission is divided into two categories, spontaneous emission, stimulated emission. Now, if you are having any doubts till now, ask me now. Hello, if you are having any doubts, ask me now. Hello. Sir, no doubt, sir. You can carry on. Are you listening? Somebody is listening music or singing. At least try to act if you are listening. Hello. Hello. Okay, next one is I'm going to the next topic. So that is the concept of population inversion and pumping. So what is meant by this population inversion and what is the requirement of this population inversion? So observe population inversion, the word. What is meant by this population? So for example, what is the population of our class? Let us say 60. Or now, what is the population of our online class, which is going on now, let us say 90. What is the population of Telangana state? Let us say four or four crores or five crores like that. Population means the number of entities or the number of objects which are present in that particular system. So usually, if we consider the two energy levels, already you know, one is ground state and second one is higher energy level. So usually under normal circumstances, majority of the electrons are present at ground state. Therefore, let us indicate the number of electrons present at ground state with N1 and the electrons present at higher energy level with N2. Now what happens, the number of electrons present in the ground state is usually more in number than compared to the number of electrons present at higher energy level. That is, N1 is greater than N2. That is the condition for population. But now we need what is meant by this population inversion. Therefore, we have to write inverse condition for population. What is the condition for population? N1 is greater than N2. What is the inverse of this one? N2 is greater than N1. That means the number of electrons present in the higher energy level must be greater than the number of electrons present in the ground state is known as 
population inversion so what is this population inversion the number of electrons present in the higher energy level must be greater than the number of electrons present in the lower energy level why this is required so in order to operate the process of emission whether it may be a spontaneous emission or stimulated emission we need more number of electrons in the higher energy level if we place more number of electrons in the higher energy level more number of emissions takes place during the more number of emissions more number of photons are coming out so if more number of photons are coming out then what happens we are getting continuous light if it is the stimulated emission process more number of coherent photons are coming out in a continuous manner then we are getting continuous laser light so that's why if you place more number of electrons in the higher energy level more number of emissions takes place as a result more number of photons are coming out that's why continuous laser light will be produced that's why population inversion is the mandatory requirement to conduct the process of stimulated emission or emission or so here our intention is our intention is to have to produce laser produce laser so that's why we have to conduct the process of stimulated emission therefore population inversion is the mandatory requirement to provide the favorable condition to conduct stimulated emission during the process of such a stimulated emission more number of coherent photons are coming out that's why laser light will be emitted right then how to achieve this population inversion to achieve population inversion usually we have to conduct a process such a process is known as see here pumping process what is meant by this pumping how to pump the electrons from lower energy level to higher energy level to achieve population inversion if you pump more and more number of electrons in the to the higher energy level more number of electrons are there in the higher energy level than in the ground state therefore we are achieving population inversion therefore how to achieve population inversion if you conduct the process of pumping what is meant by this pumping pumping is a process which lifts the electrons from lower energy level to higher energy level to achieve population inversion see the definition here pumping process is defined as the process which excites the electrons from ground state to the excited state to achieve population inversion therefore if there is no pumping there is no population inversion if there is no population inversion there is no stimulated emission if there is no stimulated emission there is no laser output therefore if you want to get the laser output you must start the process with the pumping as a result of pumping population inversion is there once population inversion is there stimulated emission takes place during the process of stimulated emission more and more number of coherent photons are coming out so once you are getting coherent photons such a coherent photons are present only in laser light therefore the corresponding light will be called as laser light so in this way we have to know the importance of population inversion and second one is pumping process and we are having so many pumping process and the best way the best examples of this pumping process are first one is optical pumping what is optical pumping for example the electrons are present in the ground state so towards those electrons which are present at the ground state we are focusing the light just like flash of a camera we are flashing light towards yeah. the electron which are present in the ground state as a result what happens those electrons gains what type of energy optical energy as a result they will be the electrons are at to the higher energy level then population inversion is there therefore stimulate emission very easy number of coherent photons are more therefore let very easily able to get and the second of electrical pumping is electrical pumping. so excitation by electron impact that means so, so in between the two electrodes we have to apply certain amount of potential difference as a result the electrons will be raised to the higher energy levels and the third type of pumping chemical pumping so the 
which is nothing but excitation of electrons from ground state to the higher energy levels by conducting certain chemical reactions. So in this way, that the best examples to conduct the process of one is optical pumping, second one is optical pumping, finally without pumping, there is no oscillation version. one message from Raithi. so that is he is having a doubt with optical pumping so let me explain one second optical pumping so what is meant by first of all what is meant by pumping so pumping is a process which lifts the electrons from lower energy level to higher energy level as a result population inversion will be reached so here one example for pumping process is optical pumping what is meant by optical? Optical means light. Therefore, once the electrons are present at ground state, towards those electrons, we are flashing a light, just like flash of a camera. As a result, what happens? The electrons are present in the ground state, they will absorb from the light. light energy. As a result, those are reached to the higher energy level. Right, and once again, I'm going to explain the second one is electrical pumping. What is meant by this electrical pumping? So, the, the electrical pumping. So we are having two electrodes behind the laser production device. So in between those two electrodes, we will apply certain amount of potential difference. As a result, what happens? So the electrons which are present in that device will be excited to the higher energy levels. Once those are reached to the higher energy levels, then what happens? We are reaching to the stage of population inversion. And the remaining process is as usual. Once population inversion is there, then stimulated emission, so power and photons, laser light, all these are possible. So if anybody is having doubts regarding the population inversion and the pumping process, ask me now. No, sir. No, sir. Can I go to the next no, topic? Sir. Yes, sir. If anybody is coming, please ask. Sir, population inversion of sir. Fine. So, what is meant by this population inversion? Very, very important. What is this population inversion? So, let me explain first with a general example. What is meant by this population? Population means what? So, for example, what is the population in our home? What is the population? Usually four members or five members, whatever it may be like this. So, what is the population of our class? So, 60 members usually, if you conduct the offline classes, 60. But now, we club to three sections, therefore, total strength should be 180. But as of now, I will observe only 93 members. So, what is the population of our present online class? Only 93. So what is the population of our state? So let us say five crores or four crores like that. Therefore, population means the number of objects which are present in a particular system will be called as population. Then here, we are having a system of two energy levels. Out of those two, one is called as ground state and second one is higher energy level. Second one is higher energy level. Usually ground state having less energy, higher energy level, which is having more energy. And you know, majority of the electrons under normal circumstances, they are present at ground state. Therefore, the number of electrons present in the ground state are more than compared to the number of electrons present at higher energy level. Therefore, if you write the condition for population in a system of two energy levels, the number of electrons present in the ground are more when compared to the 
number of electrons present at higher energy level. If you indicate the number of electrons at ground state with N1 and the number of electrons in the higher energy level with N2, therefore condition for population is N1 greater than N2. That means the number of electrons present in the ground state must be greater than the number of electrons present at higher energy level. Therefore, N1 is greater than N2. But see our heading, this is population inversion. We have to write the inverse condition for population. So condition for population is N1 greater than N2. And inverse for that condition is N2 greater than N1. What is meant by this N2 greater than N1? The number of electrons present in higher energy level must be greater than the number of electrons present in lower energy level. So therefore, it will be known as population inversion. What is the requirement of this population inversion? So to produce laser light, we need stimulate emission. And stimulate emission starts from higher energy level and it ends with ground state. Therefore, if you provide more and more number of electrons in the higher energy level, known as a population, more number of stimulate emission takes place. As a result, more number of coherent photons we are going to get. Therefore, we are getting continuous laser light. So that's why population inversion is the mandatory requirement to produce the laser light. Without population inversion, there is no stimulated emission. If there is no stimulated emission, there is no coherent photons emission. If there is no coherent photons emission, there is no laser output. And here we are having one more dot uh, uh, regarding the optical pumping, but I will tell you little, little while. So once I will explain the process of pumping. What is meant by this pumping? We have to place more and more number of electrons in the higher energy level. That means to get the population inversion, we have to operate something, a new process. Such a process is nothing but pumping process. Pumping is a process which lifts the electrons from lower energy level to higher energy level to achieve population inversion to achieve population inversion we have to conduct a process which is known as pumping what is meant by this pumping so the electrons which are present in the ground state are pumped to the higher energy levels to achieve population inversion it is called as a pumping process if there is no pumping there is no population inversion if there is no population inversion, there is no stimulated emission. If there is no stimulated emission, there is no coherent photons production. If coherent photons are not emitted, that light is not a laser light. Such a kind of pumping, several types of pumpings will be there. So out of those several types of pumping, the first one is optical pumping. So you know what is meant by optical pumping? So majority of the electrons are present at the ground state and we are forcing the light towards those electrons. They will absorb the light energy and they will reach it to the higher energy level. They are achieving population inversion. And here there is one question. So in optical pumping, if you use the normal light, then electrons are excited or not? Definitely electrons are excited. So therefore also, so even though if you apply the normal light, or water may be the light, normal light means white light or monochromatic light. If you use any type of light, the electrons present in the ground state, they will absorb light energy and they will be reached to the higher energy level. And the population inversion is there. Once the population inversion is there, to get the laser light, we have to conduct the process of stimulated emission. That is the difference. Once the population inversion is there, if you want to get the normal light, we have to conduct the process of spontaneous emission. So once population inversion is there, as a result of pumping, if we conduct a stimulated emission, we are getting laser light. If you conduct the spontaneous emission, you will get the normal light. That is the difference. So this is about population inversion as well as pumping process. Now tell me, anybody is having doubts? Awesome. No, sir. You can continue, sir. So, no doubts. You can continue. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. No doubts, sir. Okay. I'm going to the next topic. No, so, which is 
वेरी 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 इंपॉर्टेंट बिकॉज ऑब्जर्व द नेम ऑफ द साइंटिस्ट हु इन्वॉल्व इन दिस टॉपिक सी आइनस्टेन you know the importance of einstein at least you can able to recognize so the importance is several several inventions made by the scientist einstein even in the lasers also his contribution is there and in fact he is the first person who can who can predict well, if you well, conduct well, certain well, process well. in a systematic way there is a possibility to produce laser light so in the year 1917 einstein predicted that if you conduct the two process one is absorption and second one is emission in a systematic manner and in a sequential manner then there is a possibility to produce a new kind of electromagnetic radiation once again in the year 1917 einstein predicted that if you conduct the two process you know one is absorption and second one is emission if you conduct these two processes in a systematic manner and in a sequential manner sequential manner means first you have to conduct absorption then followed by emission process therefore if you conduct these two in a systematic manner and in a sequential manner always there is a possibility to produce a new kind of electromagnetic radiation later such a new kind of electromagnetic radiation is named as laser there is a first prediction done by the scientist einstein in the year 1917 and second one out of these two process absorption and emission the role of emission is very very important to get laser and he proved these two predictions what is the two predictions first one if you conduct the two processes known as absorption and emission in a systematic manner in a sequential manner always there is a possibility to produce a new kind of electromagnetic radiation and second point second prediction is out of the two process one is absorption and second one is emission the role of emission is very important to produce laser light and he proved these two predictions with help of a mathematical relation such a mathematical relation is known as einstein's coefficients and this theory is known as einstein's theory of radiation so this is having two names one is either einstein's theory of radiation or second one is einstein's coefficients and surprisingly probably you are all surprised uh, by hearing this point so that is observe this einstein's theory is predicted in the year 1917 and the first successful laser was operated in the year 1960 1960 1960 by exactly implementing einstein's theory of radiation maiman was the scientist who was successful to operate the first successful laser that is nothing but ruby laser in the year 1960 exactly by implementing this einstein's theory of radiation observe the difference where is 1917 and where is 1960 60 minus 17 how many is difference 43 years difference that means to understand the einstein's concept we need 43 years nothing was new in the maimans concept exactly by implementing einstein's theory of radiation which was introduced in the year 1917 exactly by implementing that einstein's theory of radiation scientist name is maiman who operated the success laser which is known as ruby laser in the year 1960 and he named that new kind of electromagnetic radiation as laser and this entire process was shown by the einstein in terms of a mathematical relation and i will tell you this entire mathematical expression once the class what we cause it is really difficult to show me or to derive me this einstein the mathematical relation it will be like this so so many parameters i have to introduce so to explain this mathematical relation so please zoom sir 
I will explain this session once classes are reopened. So once classes are reopened, weekly we will conduct one or two weeks of classroom sessions. During that session, I will explain this mathematical relation. But you have to know the importance. One is he is the man who there is a possibility of electromagnetic radiation. So now I am I am unmuted. Having any doubt, ask me now. Please ask. If anybody is having doubts related to Einstein's concept, ask. I requested all of you. We are having three doubts till now. Not only in the Einstein's concept, right from the beginning, if you are having any doubts, please ask. No, sir. No, sir. Can I go? To yes, sir. Yes, sir. Next topic. It's uh, types of lasers. I have so many different types of lasers. So what are the different types of lasers which are available? So you have to consider what are different types of lasers. So as of now, we are having three different types of lasers. One is a solid state laser, one is a gas laser, or one is a semiconductor laser. These are the three lasers which are available as of now. What are the three lasers? It's a solid state laser. Second one is a gas laser and the third one is semiconductor laser and here you have to note behind the every classification this is the classification of lasers or types of lasers behind the every classification we have some basis and what is the basis what is the basis to divide the three types of lasers based on state of activity L. based on state we are having three types of lasers. So, what is meant by this active material? The material which is completely responsible to produce laser light by undergoing stimulated emission. Such a material will be called as active material. The material which is completely responsible to produce laser light by undergoing stimulated emission. Such a material will be called as active material then how do you identify active material usually active material is, active is present in very less concentration so in majority of the cases the material which is present below 10 percent concentration will be called as active material if such a active material is in the form of a solid we will get solid state laser and the active material is in the form of gas we are getting gas laser and the active material is in the form of doped. If you are doping the active material with some impurities, then you will get the laser. In our syllabus, we are having three lasers. One is a solid state laser. Here, solid material is the active material. Second one is gas laser. In this, gas is the active material. And the third one is semiconductor laser. Here, we are doped with impurities then such a dopants will act as active material. Therefore, first one solid state laser. So this solid state laser is having an example of ruby laser. Gas laser example is helium neon laser. And semiconductor laser, it is further divided into two categories. Homojunction semiconductor laser and second one is heterojunction semiconductor laser. For homojunction semiconductor laser, gallium arsenide semiconductor laser is the example. For the heterojunction semiconductor laser, gallium, aluminium, arsenide is the example. Therefore, now we have to study the three types of lasers. First one is a solid state laser. Example is ruby laser. Second one is gas laser. Example is helium neon laser. Third one is semiconductor laser. For homojunction, gallium arsenide. For heterojunction, gallium, aluminium, arsenide. 
but out of these three here in this laser topic of your syllabus we are having only two first one solid state ruby is an example second one gas helium ion laser is an example why because the semiconductor laser is already discussed in unit number 3 what is the name of unit number 3 opto electronic devices in that opto electronic devices we are having the operation of semiconductor laser that's why in the fourth unit under lasers chapter we are having only two types of lasers one is a solid state laser example is ruby laser second one is gas laser example is helium ion laser so now tell me if you are having any doubts ask hello sir sir hmm. once can you explain what is active material active material active material means the material which is how do you get laser light to produce laser light you have to conduct the process of stimulate emission right please respond how do you get the laser light to get the laser light how to conduct the process of stimulate emission right yes sir yes sir sir to conduct stimulate emission we require certain kind of material For the material, sir, you, which is sir, your water is breaking. How is clear? No, sir. Hello. It's uh, not clear. It's not clear. Okay, just a minute. Now, yes, sir. Is clear now? Ah, yes, sir. Somewhat better. Somewhat better, sir. Okay, can I proceed? Yes, sir. So active material means the material which undergoes stimulated emission. During the process of stimulated emission, we will get laser light. Therefore, we need some material. Material mm -hmm. must undergo stimulated emission. Therefore, the material which undergoes stimulated emission, as a result, we will get laser light. Such a material will be called as active material. And such a active okay. material is usually present in very less concentration. less than 10% let us say percent concentration of some kind of material is 100% out of this 100% this active material concentration is less than 10% such a small quantity is sufficient to undergo stimulate emission as a result we will get laser light so oh, such so a active material is the form of solid i will tell you ruby for example the example is ruby What is the composition of ruby? You know the general name ruby. Ruby ruby means uh, if you know the stones in Telugu, ruby is nothing but pagadam. I think all of you hear the name pagadam. Muthiyam pagadam. Yes sir. Yes sir. Yes sir. What is the color of that pagadam? Usually it is red in color. Yes. So many colors. Pagadam. What is the traditional color of pagadam? Ruby. Red. Sir. Red. Uh, red color red color so many colors what is the composition of ruby so it is aluminum trioxide ruby composition is aluminum trioxide al2o3 in which 0.05% of chromium is added what is the composition once again aluminum trioxide al2o3 uh, to which 0.05% of chromium so Here, point not five percent of chromium, less than ten percent or not. Therefore, this chromium will act as active material. Such a small point not five percent of chromium is sufficient to produce laser light by undergoing stimulated emission. That is the importance of active material. The material which is present in least concentration and it will undergo stimulated emission. As a result. We will get laser light. Such a material will be called as active material. Such a active material is in the form of a solid. We will get solid state laser. Example is ruby laser. And if such a active material is in the form of a gas, we are getting gas laser. Example is helium ion laser. and such a active material is doped with impurities not not in its pure form certain impurities are added then we will get semiconductor laser 
so like this based on state of active material active material is in the form blind very blindly you can able to identify active material is in the form of solid you will get solid state laser ruby laser is an example okay, active sir. material is in the form of gas we are getting laser helium and neon both are gases or not so helium neon laser is an example like that based on the state of active material we are having three types of lasers solid state laser gas laser and semiconductor laser clear now yes sir yes, so now i am going to explain so solid state laser the solid state laser so here ruby laser example in our syllabus so what is this ruby laser already told you so exactly in the year 1960 by implementing the einstein theory of radiation hyman was the scientist who operated the first successful laser see that is the ruby laser ruby is the first laser so ruby laser discovered by the scientist hyman in the year 1960 by exactly implementing einstein's theory of radiation see this point so ruby laser it is a three level solid state laser discovered by dr t maiman in the year 1960 what is the principle principle is nothing but you have to identify active material see the chromium ions are raised to the excited state by optical pumping so the point not by percentage of chromium ions are usually present at ground state so towards those chromium ions we are focusing strong source of light as a result the chromium ions will absorb light thereby they will be raised to the higher energy levels once chromium ions are present at higher energy levels we are achieving population inversion once population inversion is there very easily you can able to conduct the process of stimulated emission during the process of stimulated emission once again the story repeats during the process of stimulated emission what you are getting coherent photons once you are getting continuous coherent photon emission such a light will be called as less light see due to the stimulated emission transition takes place from higher energy levels to lower energy level by emitting laser light then this is the construction see so here this is the discharge tube so this green one is nothing but discharge tube which is made up of with quartz tube and inside the quartz tube see the light violet color or you may call this one as a light color so that is nothing but ruby rod that means ruby is taken in the form of rod or you know already what is meant by ruby see here ruby is the crystalline aluminum trioxide in which 0.05% of chromium oxide so chromium oxide is added see this point ruby is a crystalline aluminum trioxide in which 0.05% of chromium oxide is added so such a material is taken in the form of rod and this is the rod here and around the rod see here this is spring shape arrangement this spring shape arrangement is nothing but helical shape. we are having a flash lamp which is in the form of a spring such a shape will be called as helical shape and on both sides observe here this white this this white portion and this white portion so that is nothing but polishing ends both the ends of the ruby rod are having silver mirror and those are polished and only one end see this end this right hand side end is coated with silver along the silver coated end we will get observe this is the laser light so the green one is nothing but see the green one is nothing but discharge tube which is made up of with quartz material inside that discharge tube see this light colored the light violet color or you may call this one as a pale pink so that is nothing but ruby material which is taken in the form of rod rod and around this quartz tube and ruby rod we are having spring like arrangement so this is helical shape flash lamp is there in this helical shape flash lamp we filled xenon gas and the two ends of the ruby rod this is the left hand side end of the ruby rod and this is the right hand side end of a ruby rod we are having two mirrors what is the purpose of mirror so they will 
they will limit the entire light radiation within their fossil and out of these two mirrors so only one end that is the right hand side end is coated with silver and it is polished and it is coated with silver to get the efficient laser light and observe here the two ends of the flash lamp are connected to a power supply so once you connect the power supply what happens this is the flash lamp observe the name flash lamp this lamp produces white light in the form of flash as a result the chromium ions which are present here those are excited to the higher energy levels thereby population inversion once population inversion is there story continues what is the story stimulated emission coherent photons laser emission this is the experimental setup right then coming to the energy level diagram how the entire emission process takes place laser emission process takes place observe here this e1 is the ground state and e2 is the metastable state and e3 is the higher energy level you know very easily e3 is the higher energy level e1 is the ground state and this is new name e2 is metastable state what is this metastable state the intermediate energy level or the middle energy level which is present in between higher energy level and the ground state will be called as metastable state the intermediate energy level for example up to 10th class you are in intermediate yeah up to 10th class you are in school and from btech onwards you are in college professional college therefore to bridge the gap between your school and a professional education one intermediate course your intermediate education is there like that so the intermediate energy levels are the middle energy levels which are present in between higher energy level and ground state are called as metastable states what is the purpose of these metastable states so usually higher energy level is far away from this ground state see this higher energy level is far away from the ground state therefore the electrons which are present in the higher energy level they can't emit such a huge amount of energy at a stretch that's why they will emit little bit amount of energy and they will be reached to the metastable state they will relax for a while and they will continue the further transition until they will be reached to the ground state usually chromium ions are present see here at the ground state which is represented with e1 in this diagram then with the help of optical pumping so see absorption of pumping of light so the chromium ions absorbs light therefore they will be reached to the higher energy level e3 therefore from e3 onwards we will conduct the process of stimulated emission but e3 is far away from e1 that's why huge amount of energy can't emit at a stretch that's why they will emit little bit amount of energy therefore chromium ions are returned to e2 energy level known as metastable state they will relax a little while and further they will continue the remaining energy release and they are reached to the ground state once those are reached to the ground state again flash lamp produces light therefore they are excited again they are de-excited again excited de-excited therefore this process continues like a psychic manner that's why continuous coherent photons are coming out therefore continuous laser light will be you are getting and the output wavelength of the laser light is 6943 angstrom units you know 6943 angstrom units of wavelength you are getting this is well known red light wavelength that's why the color of the laser is red in color so this is the experimental arrangement and operation of ruby laser if you are having any doubts in the operation of ruby laser now ask if you are having any doubts in the operation of ruby laser ask no please rest. if you are having any doubts please ask now no sir that is clear ruby laser yes sir please stop yes sir, yes, sir. Yes sir. Yes sir. Yes sir. Yes sir. Okay. Okay. Yes sir. Now, sir. One question. Tell me. 
uh, will the meta stable state uh, be at the half of the e1 and e2 no no not at half e2 because e3 and e1 those are not amount of energy so for our for example in this ruby case e1 and e3 for example in the helium and lighter case e1 e2 e3 e4 e5 these energy levels are same. that's why those are not so meta stable state clear definition is to instead as this specific energy level and here there is one question from prashant what is the three level state in the definition three level laser means how many energy we are having e1 ground state right e3 higher energy level and e2 is metastable state how many number of energy levels that are present that will be called as level of laser system here in the ruby laser we are having three levels that's why it is a three level laser system hope prashant will understand prashant yes sir means level of the laser system how many number of energy levels are there that indicate level of the laser system. here three energy levels are there that it is called as level laser system clear then there is one more doubt from mohit why coating is required so if we are having silver coating the efficiency is improved if more is the efficiency more powerful light is coming out you know the characteristics of lasers unidirectional light second one is what is the second high intensity to get such a high intensity to improve the efficiency of the laser coating is required i hope mohit is understand mohit ask yes, sir why coating is required yes, sir is one question from anirudh why only this lamp is filled with flash lamp very good heat cannot get that's why we fill the flash lamp with xenon gas nowadays we use the laptop done in the 1960 during those days my man used xenon gas so many gas available hope anirudh Sir, we can't hear you. Sir. Your voice is not no. clear. No. no. Better. It is okay, Anirudh. Anirudh. Sir. No, sir, it's stuck. Oh, it's Malay. Huh? Sir, there are a lot of disturbance. Sir, your voice is breaking. Then I will mute. Wait, wait. wait. right so once ruby laser is over then exactly in the same format i have to go for another laser which is there in our syllabus that is nothing but helium neon laser again so the simple way first of all helium neon laser this was invented sorry not invented this was discovered in the year 1961 who discovered this one observe here the scientist name javan javan is the scientist name who discovered the first successful gas laser not solid state laser first successful gas laser which is nothing but helium neon laser which was operated in the year 1961 again principle is exactly same so first of all you have to identify which one is the active material here helium and neon gases taken in the ratio 10 is to 1 10 is to 1. For every 10 helium atoms, we are having one neon atom. Therefore, obviously, which is present in least concentration, that will becomes active material. Here, neon atoms are present in least concentration. That's when neon atoms will act as active material. Therefore, we have to exit the neon atoms to the higher energy level. Therefore, population inversion again during the process of stimulate emission for uh, coherent photons, less energy. And this is the experimental setup of. Uh, helium neon laser once again this is the discharge tube 
which is filled with helium and neon gases in the ratio 10 is to 1. And we are having two windows. So this is one window and this is another window. And within the windows, we are having two mirrors. One is M1 on the left hand side and second one is M2 on the right hand side. Both are concave mirrors coated with silver. And at the bottom of the discharge tube, we are having two electrodes. Observe here, electric discharge here. So first of all, in the discharge tube, this is the discharge tube made up of with quartz material. We are placing helium and neon atoms on the ratio 10 is to 1. Being less in number, neon atoms will act as active material. Therefore, neon atoms will undergo stimulate redemption. Thereby, we will get laser light. And we are having windows. So these two windows are called as Brewster's windows. Those are placed at a special angle theta equals to tan inverse of n to get bright light. To improve the efficiency of the light, we are placing those windows with special inclination. And we are having mirrors M1 and M2. Already I told you those two are concave mirrors. So this M1 on the left hand side is the thick concave mirror and M2 on the right hand side is thin concave mirror. What is the purpose of mirrors? So we are limiting the entire light radiation which was generated in this discharge tube within the fossa of these two mirrors. That is the purpose of mirror system. And at the bottom, we are having two electrodes. In between the two electrodes, a suitable amount of potential difference is applied. As a result, neon atoms are reached to the higher energy level. Here you have to remember one point. So pumping is a process which always excites active material from lower energy level to higher energy level. They reach. So this is the exponential On the right hand side, we are getting the laser output. Here the output wavelength is 6328 angstrom unit. It is again red in color. So are you able to hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, Are sir. you able to hear me? Yes, sir. Point. This method. Okay. Two gases, helium and neon gases, in the mixed in the ratio of 10 to 1 in discharge tube made up of with quartz crystal. The dimensions of the discharge tube 80 centimeters in length and 1.5 centimeters diameter. And we are having a special windows slanted with special angle that is theta equals to tan inverse of n. And those windows are called as Brewster's windows. And here n is the refractive index of a material which is used for the manufacturing of window usually alkyl halides like NaCl will be used for manufacturing of windows see the purpose of placing windows on either side of the discharge tube is to get the plane polarized laser output and the two concave mirrors m1 and m2 are arranged on both sides of the discharge tube so as a result we will limit the entire light radiation within their fossa of those two mirrors and out of the two mirrors one is m1 and second one is m2 m1 is the thick concave mirror present on the left hand side and m2 is the thin concave mirror present on the right hand side so if any radiation goes along the left side thick concave mirror side that concave mirror does not allow any radiation to come out it reflects back into the lasing medium that is into the discharge tube therefore Along the in concave mirror, right hand side, we will get the laser light. Right? Then, if you consider the working process, see here, first one, this is the blue, blue color indicates the ground state. On the left hand side, this is the helium atoms, and this is the right hand side, neon atoms. First, I will explain the role of helium atoms here. Majority of the helium atoms are present at ground state, and you know, majority atoms are helium atoms. So therefore, helium atoms are colliding themselves. As a result, some of the helium atoms gains energy, some of the helium atoms lose energy. Therefore, the helium atoms which gain energy, those are raised to the higher energy levels, F1 and F2. See here, these are the helium atoms. And in case of neon, this is the neon, the right hand side portion. Majority of the neon atoms are present at ground state. Then we will conduct the process of electric discharge pumping. Therefore, neon atoms are reached to the higher energy level. See here, E6 and E4 are the higher energy levels. And observe, 
the higher energy level of this helium and higher energy level of neon that means this e6 e4 and f1 and f2 are having almost same energy that's why some of the helium atoms transfer their energy to the neon atoms such an energy lacks as external agency to start the process of stimulated emission therefore once the stimulated emission starts observe this e5 energy level then e3 energy level and e2 energy level those they are metastable states observe here in the case of ruby laser we are having only one metastable state in case of ruby laser e2 is the metastable state but in case of helium ion laser we are having three metastable states one is e5 second one is e3 and second one is e2 even though we are having three metastable states but that will be considered as one kind of metastable state two higher energy levels one metastable state one ground state how many energy levels four different energy levels that's why this is an example for four level laser system right so therefore what happens once the neon atoms are present at higher energy level the helium atoms transfer their energy to the neon atoms stimulate emission starts as a result we are getting different wavelengths but observe 63 to 8 angstrom units is the actual wavelength we are having some other wavelengths double one five zero double three nine zero but laser light is a visible light or not we can able to observe laser light we can able to see the laser light or not therefore it must be present in the visible range visible range starts from 4000 angstrom units and it will extend up to 8500 angstrom units therefore you can able to see any light which is present in between 4000 angstrom units to 8500 angstrom units will be called as visible light but observe this one 3390 not in the range that's why this is not a laser light observe 1150 again this is not in the range of 4000 to 8500 angstrom units that's why this is not a laser light only one light corresponding to a wavelength of 60 to 8 angstrom units will be present in the range of 4000 to 8500 angstrom units called as visible range therefore only you can able to see that light that is the red light wavelength therefore 60 to 8 angstrom units wavelength is the well known laser light wavelength in this way we have to operate helium neon laser now ask me if we are having any doubts in the helium neon laser Yes, is clear yes, sir. is clear means the last topic in the lessons see very very easy topic oh my god topics we discussed so far random of laser by the laser light four special characteristics one is unidirectionality, high intensity, monochromacity, coherence. Why only laser is having those four characteristics? It contains coherent photons. Right? Then absorption, stimulated. Population inversion. Laser, helium neon laser. Then coming to the last topic of lasers. Uh, there is Okay. Now it is okay? No, sir. And we can, like, one more question from Suman. So, helium nan laser is available. In our lab, we are having semiconductor lasers. Helium nan laser and ruby laser, both are industrial scale lasers and they are lab we are having semiconductor laser and there is one more question from optical exactly exactly there is one more question it's metastable state already told you the so during the energy from higher energy level to lower energy level, so the electrons or atoms they can't able to emit 
energy at a stretch so that's why they will relax till while in the metastable state and they will continue to further emission that is the role of so voice is breaking i say come up please please okay now it is okay now it is okay yes sir yes sir yes sir they coming to the last topic very very easy topic that is applications of lasers in various fields because of those four special characteristics already you know very narrow band width high dimensionality extreme brightness coherence because of all these because of all these we are having so many applications so in the communication field what are the applications see lasers are used in optical communications laser beam can be used as a communication between to establish the communication between earth and moon or between earth and other artificial satellites we are going to use laser light because it is having the ability to travel long distance without reduction in the intensity that's why nowadays to find out the distance between earth and moon not only earth and moon to find out the distance between earth and other artificial satellites we are going to use this laser light and this laser light is also used to establish uh, underwater uh, connection communication link that means so station is outside uh, above the sea level and submarine it is underwater to establish the communication link, link between those two we are going to use laser light and in the area of medical field so many applications so the first application is laser light will be used to identification of tumor in the treatment of cancer to remove the stones in the kidneys to identify the tumors in the brain to remove the unwanted hair so like this we are having so many medical applications and in the industry point of view you know diamond is the hardest material but we are having different shapes different shaped diamonds so to cut those diamonds which is very very hardest substance in the universe we are using laser light because such a powerful light is laser therefore to attain the proper shape for the diamond we are going to use the laser light and to detect the flaws on the big bodies like aeroplane and submarines you know if there is a small flaw flaw is nothing but miniature hole very very small defect will be called as flaw if a small hole is there on the surface of submarine on the surface of aeroplane you know what happens to identify the presence of miniature holes called as flaws the entire body of submarine and ship submarines ships or aeroplanes are thoroughly checked with laser light right then other chemical and biological applications if we treat the uh, seeds so you, we need seeds so once seeds are seeds are planted we will get the crop to get the maximum yield such as seeds are treated with laser light then harmful germs viruses bacteria not corona right bacteria virus all those will be killed so therefore the role of pesticides will be minimized so in this way laser light is useful and if you want to separate the isotopes you know what is meant by isotope element with same atomic number but different mass number those are clubbed together to separate those you can use laser light so like this we are having so many applications in the area of communication in the area of industry in the area of medical general applications even the security purpose also burglar alarms so those are all operated with the help of lasers so this is about the brief outline overview of the first chapter in the fourth unit laser light now you may ask any doubts related to the lasers chapter no sir so if everything is clear and if you want material i will send the material in the whatsapp group so please go through the material and somewhere around after 5 o'clock or 6 o'clock you will get a small quiz multiple choice quiz 10 to 15 questions so please answer that quiz and next one is you have to give the feedback on this class so please provide yes, the sir. feedback so i will send four files is material and second one is ppt third one is quiz link and fourth one is feedback link 
please answer all those by the night is it okay for you and then yes sir yes sir you finish sir yes sir we are having any doubts or can i close the meeting no doubts all the care well take care of yourself and your stay safe